My first recipe is a fish pie like no other. This isn't your average Friday night white fish, white sauce and mash affair. Oh no, I'm taking the humble fish pie and drop kicking it into heaven. I'm here today on the east coast of Scotland in the beautiful fishing village of Pitten Ween, where they keep that great tradition of fishing still alive. Now I'm going out with the fishermen this morning and I hope I catch a little bit more than white fish. Mike Bruce has been fishing off this coast for nearly 20 years. What he doesn't know about local fishing isn't worth knowing. Mike has invited me out on his boat to catch something extra special for my lavish fish pie, langoustines. Has it always been langoustine that's been your speciality? Is that what you concentrate on? Yeah, uh, the boat, when we first got the boat, it was, the boat's capable of catching fish and that as well, but just the, the changes in legislation and whatever, it's, it's um, limited what we're allowed to catch. Yeah. So it really is just nethrops that we're allowed to, langoustine that we're allowed to catch. How do you like your langoustine? I love strong cocktails, so we make a, a, a cocktail sauce um, to go over them, but the best thing is just to boil the kettle and the kettle straight over them and, and eat them straight away, especially if they're, if they're fresh out of the sea. Known as prawns by the locals, the langoustine is actually a small orange lobster caught in parts of the Atlantic Ocean. It's renowned for its succulent meat and delicate flavour, and it's most commonly found deep fried in breadcrumbs as the classic pub dish, scampi. How deep is this at the moment then? Um, we're in about 25 fathom. What's that in real money? 50 metres. So these are just the weights are they to hold it down? Yeah, it's just a set of what we call rubber legs that are around the bottom of the net. Because there's small discs on it, it keeps the, the net just up off the bottom that little bit. Allows you to work firmer ground. So how long how, do you then leave this and then come back for it? Yeah, we'll, we'll probably set it, we'll set it for half an hour for today, but normally we tow for um, up to four hours. Half an hour later, it's time to check the net. And it looks like we've come up trumps with the langoustines I need for my recipe. One thing I find absolutely crazy though is, you know, in the UK, we seem to be importing Norwegian prawns. And then the, prawn, the, the langoustines that are here, the prawns that are here, are actually going back the other way. Yeah, well, we've got fantastic product right on your doorstep. Yeah, and it's, it's a shame that it. it's... And it's... I mean, the, the prawns are landed fresh daily here every day, and it has been that way for, for quite some time, and it's a shame that it goes out in the country. Absolutely, yeah. So what do you reckon about using langoustine in the pie? Good choice? Definitely, yeah. And as a prawn fisherman, you... you kind of get a better product, healthier, tasty, non-fattening, perfect. Thanks very much, Mike. I'll see you soon, buddy. Yep, no okay. problem. I love that. I've already got one luxury ingredient for my fish pie, but I need more. Most of the local catches are sold in the fish market. So, I drop by to discover what other tasty maritime treats might go into my Rolls Royce of fish pies. What I'm looking for is flavours to go inside my pie, and I'm looking for a bit of luxury. What do you recommend? Here's some uh, crabs. I got crabs. Crab could be useful. Maybe a little bit of mash. Talking about your pie, I was just thinking, what about monkfish? That's, that goes yeah. well with the uh, prawns. Perfect. Ah, uh, that's the fella. There you go. Now that's very good with prawns. Yeah. In fact, at one time, the monkfish, the, the tail of the monk, was actually used to make scampi when monk was cheap. Yeah. Now, it's gone full circle. Monk is an expensive fish. Prawns are the cheaper ones, so everybody uses prawns more than they would use monkfish. Exactly. But uh, that is a good mix, prawns and monkfish. I mean, it's an ugly fish. It's a very ugly fish, but, but it's a very nice good. tasting fish. <laughs> it's a perfect. I'll probably use a little bit of the crab as well somewhere. I'm not yes, sure yet. Yes. But it's beginning to form a plan. I think I've got all my component parts for my fish pie, but earlier, Mike gave me a tip-off. He likes his langoustines to get the five-star treatment and sends them off to be smoked at the East Pier Smokehouse. I've only travelled a couple of miles down the coast 
but this apparently is where the magic happens. James Robb has been smoking locally caught langoustines for five years, and there's something of a regional delicacy. What do you do to this langoustine, which, which essentially is a beautiful food anyway? How do you make it even more, more special? Well, it's an interesting question, Paul, because obviously these beautiful prawns, I mean, they're you know, one of the world's finest delicacies, but I wanted to, to produce something that was obviously local and uh, really add to the taste that was already there. And uh, I think once these are boiled and gently smoked, it adds a lovely sort of toasted quality to the prawn. It, it has a very subtle, sweet flavour, nutty, almost like a fine champagne. I think it would go very well in your pie. OK, I'm down to see what they taste like. This is the smokehouse that was um, always here. It's an old smokehouse. It's been on the pier for about 40 years now. It's just a simple structure. There's no heat in here. It's just for cold smoking. Mm. And it's ideal for this because we're just trying to give a smoke flavour. We're not really uh, curing it and it's, it's got no length of time in there. Yeah. So I'll show you. These are the prawns that we did earlier. And um, if you head upstairs, I yeah. can give you a taste of them. Mm. Smoked langoustine, fresh from the smoker. Wow. That is stunning. I mean, really, really, I mean, I love langoustine anyway, but that, that smokiness that adds to it, it adds, it really yeah, does it's add. Simple, isn't it? It's simple, and I know it almost seems sacrilegious for something that's so delicate as, as a langoustine of sweetmeat, but it, it really works, and I just think it would be great in your pie. Have another. <laughs> Dig in. Absolutely delicious, and they will definitely be going in my pie. I've got here the fish that I brought back from Pit and Ween. And this is one of the little fellas here, beautiful langoustine. And Mike, thank you very much for letting us again on your, on your boat. That was a fantastic day out. The weather was fantastic as well. Yeah, quite lucky, yeah. It's amazing what you get in Barbados, isn't it? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is a luxury fish pie. This is going to take that little humble fish pie that you normally have at home on a, on a Friday or pretty much any day of the week and make it luxury. With the use of this, these little fellas, I'm going to use monkfish too. I've got some salmon. Now, I've got a job for you, Mike. You, know, you can guess what it's going to be. There's your beautiful langoustine. Could you shell the rest of them for me, please? And I'll use as sure. many as I can in, in my pie. What I'm going to do is actually start in this pan at the moment. I've got some liquor. So basically, it's perno, it's water, it's fennel, and it's onion. That's bubbling away nicely. The monkfish. I think is such a meaty, hearty fish. Now, I've cut this into, into pieces, and likewise with the salmon as well. Now, I'm going to pop this straight into the liquor and just cook it for three, four minutes. And it, the liquor, the perno that permeates into the fish, it gives it a gorgeous flavour, especially fennel. Fennel and fish is a marriage made in heaven. It's going to poach away for three to four minutes, so it's nice and tender. Poaching is a perfect cooking technique for delicate foods such as fish. It not only prevents it from drying out and preserves the natural taste, but can also infuse it with extra flavour. In this case, the perno and fennel. What did you think of the catch that we got that day? Because to be honest, it was OK. But you were telling me earlier that you went out in the afternoon and caught, I mean, a, a boat full. Yeah, well, ten times as much as what we caught when, when you were regarded you as a Jonah, bad luck Jonah. So. It, well, it's not me then. It's, that'll probably be the cameraman or the guy who's holding the sound. It wouldn't be me. Oh, we'll go for that then. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So you seriously went out and caught a huge load? Well, we towed for two hours. Um, I think we towed for 40 minutes when you were there and it was very little and went out for two hours and, and filled the, the net short space of time. So. And so the guy that works with you on the boat, did he blame me as well? Yeah. Unbelievable. Why? Just I mean, if you've never had a bad catch? Oh, no, you get quite a lot of them, but you've... You always look for somebody to blame for it. And so, <laughs> That's what so it is, isn't it? It's a lot to do with me. Were you getting the blame? It took it off of me, so... 
I'd love to go out again. I mean, next time, I mean, I, I found the whole experience on the boat, I mean, thrilling. It was, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the fish. It's been poached literally for about three minutes. It's got that little bit of bounce to it. That's the perfect way of cooking it. Perno, yep. a little bit of alcohol. And I'm going to drop this in a place. I've already got some salmon in there. Put the monkfish straight in there. Fish it out. Be nice and gentle. This is how you catch fish, Mike. Right here. It's the easy way. <laughs> yeah, you need, you, need a, you need a slotted spoon, and that's it. You just go out and catch them. Put your salmon, spread it all over the bottom. And again, this is luxury. This is, we're really going for the top end here. I mean, monkfish is becoming quite trendy now as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. It's, it seems to be quite a sustainable um, product, um, especially on the West Coast. Yeah. That's the, the sauce with all the, the pear now. And I'm going to use this liquid now by draining it off. You reduce that down, and it ends up like this. Very rich in colour. The smell of the perno, the fennel, the fish has been in there. But to that, I'm going to add a quick roux. To make a basic roux, simply cook out equal parts of butter and flour in a pan for two to three minutes. How do you eat your, your fish, then, when you catch it? I certainly don't eat it fresh. The best thing is actually to leave it in the, the, the fridge for a day or two uh, to sit in its own juice. The, the worst thing ever, as far as we're concerned as fishermen, is to eat fish straight out of the sea. So you're saying the best time to eat a fish is a day later? Yeah. What, why is that? It just, but if, if you sit in its own juice, it, it tastes so much better. Most of the fish that you actually get in this country is quite a few days old from catch anyway. Yeah. Um, it's frozen and that's straight away, so it's at the, the peak of its... It's conditioned when you actually get it, but it's it's more than just a couple of days old. So. Well, OK, these are a couple of days old then. Well, you brought them down, so you must have done. So this must have been, what, a day before yesterday? I bet with tell when I taste them, you could tell that the, if they're fresh prawns, they've just got a you know, taste the seed from them. Yeah. And you can see this now. Basically, it's, it's your roux, which has been cooked out, and you add all this liquid. Once all the liquid has been added and you cook it down, you end up with this. Now, this is going to be the basis for your sauce at the moment. If I just warm that up, slacken it down a little bit. Now, this beautifully shelled langoustine there is going to go on top of the monkfish and the salmon. I mean, you only have to look at that. You can, I could just sit there with a load of chips and mayonnaise and just eat that as it is. To finish the sauce, I add cream and freshly chopped tarragon to the pan and keep stirring over a low heat for five minutes or so until the sauce has thickened. Finally, pour your luxurious sauce over the fish. Normally, you'd, you'd probably have just a very basic roux inside it, if anything. Mm -hmm. Some people just put the fish, maybe a little bit of milk, yeah, and then just put the, the mashed potato on top of that. So what we're looking at here is something a little bit special. So we spread that out all over the bottom of the dish, and you're thinking to yourself, mm. we're going to put on top of that. What I've got here is mashed potato. It's been infused, and you can see all the way through, with saffron. It's that gold, it's that beautiful gold, yellow colour in there at the moment. That, on top of that, is going to be delicious. But to make it even more special, if it's at all possible, when I was at the fishing village at Petawin, we went round and we saw beautiful crab. This is the crab. So I thought, hang on, a little bit of crab in there as well. Just lace through that mashed potato. I think, again, we'll take it to another level. So. Just basically mix up all the mash together with the crab, and then we're going to throw it on top of the, the fish. So you basically get a fork and just spread it all over the top of the fish pie. You're dying for this, aren't you, mate? Yeah, have I done, have I done you proud so far? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Even though you blame me for not catching anything. Bar a cold. You could love for that. <laughs> I can't believe it. I always thought the fishermen in, in, in Scotland have a tough life. Um, it was, what, 26 degrees, just bouncing along on the waves, coming back with a boatload of fish. How difficult can it be? That, that was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to taste fantastic. I bake my luxury fish pie at 200 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes until the top is golden brown. Look at this. That is what you call a luxurious fish pie. Now, again, you've got the langoustines, you've got the salmon, you've got the monkfish, you've got the saffron, you've got that beautiful sauce made with the perno, and then to top it all, gorgeous mash with cream inside that and crab as well.
That's gonna be one great fish pie. This really is an extra special fish pie, and I can't wait to share it with my guests. Still to come, I meet two girls putting meringues back on the map.